all right everybody how y'all doing today now keep in mind welcome back to my channel um keep in mind that i will be reading all my notes off my paperwork here so for the beginning of this here video here as well as the final thoughts okay once again everybody welcome back to my channel today i will be doing a cpu cooler test to see which cooler is a better cooler between the thermal take gravity a2 which is already installed in the PC and the AMD race cooler now the APU is the A12 9800 which it is a 65 watt APU the thermal design part of the gravity A2 is 95 watts and on the rate step cooler the thermal design is set only at 65 watts now we already see by a 30 watt difference which is the better cooler but the only way to find that out is by doing a burn test so i had ran a cpu stress test to determine which cooler would keep my entertainment pc cool when the a12 9800 is under load the application i will be using is cpu express stress test uh, Cinebench R15 and Cinebench R20. Now these three applications are good to use when driving the load of the CPU and how good the air cooler will keep the APU cool under heavy loads. Now the APU of choice is the A12 9800. It's a four core, four thread processor with the Radeon R7 already installed inside the APU it gives once again it's four cores four threads two cores four threads will only be accessed but I have went into in my Microsoft config and I have with him and crank all cores activated so it's four cores four thread throughout the RAM is team group elite Dual kit, 16 gigabyte dual kit, 8 gigabyte sticks at 24 megahertz speed. Now, the APU only allows only 2400 megahertz. Now, if I want to upgrade the processor, I could go ahead on and change out the RAM to 32 gigahertz, 3200 megahertz of RAM. But 24 is good just for just watching my Hulu, Netflix, browsing the internet, listening to Spotify, and etc. The motherboard is the Azure A320M HDVR 4.0. The power supply is a 550 watt power supply by Raid Max. Non efficient, great power supply. I did an unboxing on it, so that's a great power supply, great cooler. I've been holding strong for two years now, so no issue. And with these three applications, like I mentioned, it will determine how good the air cooler will do under loads. Alrighty, here are the charts to determine which air cooler did a great job keeping the A12 9800 cool under loads. All right, everybody, I'm back with the final thoughts now. Before I get into my paperwork here, keep in mind that I have five Cool Moons 120mm fans in the system, which gives you about 1,200 RPM. Keep in mind, I had all the fans turned completely off. There was no, none of those fans was not blowing to help the CPU. It was just straight CPU. Yes. Pure heat, pure power, both CPUs are battling it. All right, let's get into my specs. Now, the Thermotech Gravity A2 handles the CPU expert stress test better than the Race Cooler. Now, with the uh, CPU expert test, I ran the test more than 10 minutes. 
It's supposed to run in between three to five minutes after you go ahead and you crank your threads up, which is four threads on here. You put the power at 100 and you let it run. Monitoring everything. Now, the reason why I ran it at 10 minutes, because it's like having a big beefy um, GPU window like the RTX 3000 series or the RX 6000 series where you know them babies heats up when the babies start hitting the lows processing the um, the uh, computer um, computer graphics, the CG of the video games. So that's why I ran it at 10 minutes just to see how good the load will handle on both coolers. Okay, the thermal take gravity A2 recorded a temperature of 73 degrees while the race cooler had a temperature reading at 83 degrees which gave me a scare because I thought my whole system was going to shut down. I'm like, oh my goodness, but one thing about the race cooler light, it held in there. So yes, the race cooler gave me a pressure of 83 degrees Celsius, which is a little hot than normal, but it held its own without not shutting off because everybody knows when your CPU break over 80 or 90, it, the sensor reads it and it's go ahead and power off so the whole so, so your VRMs could cool off. That wasn't the case. So by the CPU um, on the rate cooler pushing 80 degrees Celsius, I was pretty impressed that it still kept going on for a 10 minute CPU express stress test and it did not shut off. So that's a big plus right there. Uh, while the race cooler handled the temperature very well, but we all PC users know that any temps over 80 degrees is not what we like to see. Overall, in Cinebench R15, both coolers were about balanced with the race cooler temps at 72 degrees and the Gravity A2 at 69 degrees, which is about a three degree difference. So, you know, it's pretty neck to neck right there. Not bad at all. Um, so I'll go ahead and give the, um, the race cooler a big plus and handle it perfectly, you know, but the A2, as you already know, did this thing. So keeping it under, um, 69 degrees. So that's pretty decent. Keep it under 70 degrees. So that's pretty decent right there. And in Cinebench R20, the Gravity A2 handled the loads better than the AMD race cooler with the Gravity A2 reaching temps at 75 degrees and the AMD race cooler at 83 degrees once again. That's another bound stress test that will put the CPU on a massive load. That's why I ran Cinebench R20 because it's similar like Cinebench R23, but R23, go ahead and crank it constantly and then you go ahead and set how many minutes you want it to run. So, with Cinebench R20, it gave me what I expected from Cinebench R23. But we all know R23 is more enhanced, more better for all these massive heavy power CPUs that's just out in today's market. Which gave, which gave me another scare again, but the race cooler handled pretty good. Overall, the Thermotake Gravity Air Cooler wins the challenge over the AMD Race Cooler, but overall, the Race Cooler is still a great cooler to use for CPUs and APUs 65 watts to 35 watts, not under heavy loads. Basic modern gaming, basic simple PC using, Whatever you want to use, the race cooler can handle that for you for basic needs. But if you're going to go ahead and you're going to stress it out, you know, um, change your CPU to a more high end 95 watts or higher than the race cooler will not be the recommended choice for that. If you're going to change your CPU cooler out to a more high end thermal design power rated of that uh, CPU, then it's best to go ahead and use a, a cooler that can go ahead and give you better cooling performance while you crank the loads up. Whether you're doing um, editing, um, you're doing graphic design work, um, photo work, whatever rendering you're doing, or gameplay, it's best to have a CPU cooler to handle the loads of that CPU. Now, if you're overclocking, you need to handle have a CPU cooler that is going to go head on and handle 
to overclock your needs off that CPU because when you overclock it, you go a little extra over the thermal design power designed on the CPU. With the race cooler, is it good to use if you are doing light task work, as I mentioned, like light gaming, keeping your APU and CPU cool and not overheating under loads. Now, once again, just like I mentioned, now, I know a lot of y'all junk the race cooler. Just like I said, if you are on a budget and you don't want to buy an extra cooler, the race cooler is good to use. Whatever cooler comes with the Ryzen processors, use it. Now, if you want to go ahead and spend a little more money like I did, like I always do, when it comes down to cooling and keeping my CPU cool, I always spend a little extra money for a better cooler just in case if I do an upgrade. So I know my cooler can handle the CPU or APU on Ryzen Zen 1, 2, or 3 that I'm dropping in to go ahead on and do what I need on a regular daily basis. Alrighty, I'm glad y'all enjoyed the video. I'm glad y'all enjoyed the charts. I'm glad y'all enjoyed the performance tests that I have done with the two coolers here. I'm happy with both coolers. You know, it's a basic, simple build. <clears throat> I don't do no, 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 no low tests or anything with it. Um, I already have my gaming rig just for play moderate mid-level games from 2013 all the way down to 2009. Now, my moderate gaming rig handles a little of today's games, but the day games that gamers play these days, and I am not into it. I just basically play my puzzle games, and my RG, and my R, uh, my role play games, my RPG games. You know, it handled my load better. So um, that's pretty much decent. And you know, when I play my games, I like to play my games in peace and quiet. As I come home, I'm not a gamer. On a scale of 1 to 10, I rate my gaming level at 2, 2.5 to, to 3%. So if you take that 2.5 to like 25 to 30% gaming, it's not 70 or higher. Like how y'all high-end high -end gamers play. And the high-end gamers, you mostly find them on Twitch anyway. So that's one thing there. But overall, with the cooler, both coolers are great. And like I explained, I like to go ahead a little bit over my thermal design handle. So I went 30% more, which I did not have to, but I'm more comfortable in going over that amount. So when I do upgrade my CPU down the line, I could go head on in, pretty much be comfortable with what I have in there. Right now, I'm keeping the system set same on the A12, 9800. I probably say within two to three years, I'll probably upgrade to the um, Ryzen 7. And just have this as my gaming PC in my room, so I'll be in the living room too much doing my thing. So yeah. Um, but overall, other than that, both coolers are great, and you cannot go wrong with that. So I want to thank all my wonderful viewers for taking the time out to watch this video. Thank y'all for watching. Um, I got more great contents coming your way. If you like this video, go ahead and give me them thumbs, thumbs, thumbs up if you like the video. It really helps my channel out a lot. Um, then like I said, I'm growing my channel slowly because I'm trying to bring in the right groom crowd for me. My, my videos are very simple, very basic, very low key. You know, ain't nothing extra ordinary you're gonna get out of it. Um, I don't have no test bench or anything. When I come home from work, and I have a day off. Yes, I work six days out of the week, one day off. I do um I do my testing and then normally that takes about four hours. So if I get home at 10, 10 30, I used to be going to bed about 3, 2 30 to 3 30 in the morning. Yeah. And y'all understand why I don't like doing um bench testing, but in the tech world, that's what you have to do to go head on and make sure that your components are running good and everything so i did go ahead on that once again i love y'all thank y'all for watching give me if you like the video 
give me a thumbs up, hit the like button on the way out, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.